Hello guys I want to review Apple iPad Mini 4, but please subscribe and like this video. The look and feel of the iPad Mini 4 will be familiar to most iPad users. The new tablet does not look to change Apple's notions of what a tablet should be, but they did manage to shave some thickness and weight. Measuring in at just 6.1 mm thick, the iPad Mini 4 relies on that familiar full metal back for rigidity and strength. Still curving around the sides, the metal meets up with the full glass front panel, housing the home button with fingerprint scanner at the bottom, 7.9 inch display in the center and front facing camera up at the top. Available in three familiar to Apple colors on the back, silver, space gray, and gold, the front of the device is complemented by either a white or black surface, depending on your main color choice. I feel I should note that the iPad Mini 4 does feel pretty good in the hand, but still suffers from that sharp edge at that polished front of the metal. This is not a real problem, but it does become noticeable after long periods of use. Apple decided to stick with a good thing when it comes to the display. Not to imply that there are not any advancements here, but the actual display panel remains the same as in the last two iterations in the iPad Mini line. The iPad Mini 4 packs a familiar 7.9 inch display with 2048 x 1536 pixels in resolution. With 326 ppi staring you in the face, the only thing Apple needed to do to the Mini line was update the glass. You will find the same fully laminated glass with anti-reflective coating on the iPad Mini 4 as is found on the iPad Air 2 and the upcoming iPad Pro. At least in this category, the new Mini tablet is now playing with the best of them. Colors are bright and clear, and in all honesty, they are a step above the iPad Mini 3. Overall display brightness exceeds the previous gen tablet's capabilities and viewing angles are on PAR with the best displays out there. The ambient light sensor adequately keeps display auto brightness running optimally, with only a few minor adjustments required in the harshest of lighting situations. Apple made a smart move in deciding which camera sensor to install. Instead of sticking with the same old 5MP eyesight camera that we've seen on Apple devices for years now, they've installed the newer 8MP sensor. The same one that is in the iPad Air 2 and the newer lines of iPhone. Image quality is great, as we've come to expect from Apple. Admitting that the 8MP sensor is far short of the 21MP sensors you'll find on many Android devices, Apple proves that there is more to a great photo than just a pixel count. We can tell you that color reproduction feels very heavy on the red, but otherwise looks pretty good that noise levels in low light situations is better than acceptable but still easy to see and that video capture is similar while mostly clean and smooth, but we would really rather just show you in the following image gallery. Quick note, I handed the device, and the iPad Mini 3, as you'll see in our VS post, to an individual that did not take any time to ensure the best lighting or photo subjects, they just snapped away the same as they would with their own device, using the absolute default settings, and HDR, of the camera app on the iPad Mini 4. Most shots are indoors, some through glass, and all with varying lighting types and quality. No awards will be won with these photos, but, as I hope you gather, my point is that these are the sorts of final images and quality the average user will produce. As you might expect from a brand new Apple product, overall performance of the iPad Mini 4 is superb. For day-to-day -day computing, things are as fast as can be, if you push things hard with your favorite game, you will be able to notice that it is, indeed, a little slower than the iPad Air 2. Clocking along is the Apple A8 chipset, set to be 1.3x faster than the A7 in the previous Mini, with 1.6x faster graphics processing. Once again, you'll need to go beyond basic web surfing and watching your favorite videos on YouTube before you see the speed bump over the iPad Mini 3, but it's easily noticed with heavier applications. The last thing I should talk about before closing out the performance section is the new internal speaker. Now, to be clear, I do not know if Apple actually updated the speaker, the software, or what, 
but sound quality is greatly improved over the older iPad Mini 3. You'll find a nice volume boost as well as much clearer audio output, deeper bass and crisp highs. We're still talking about a single downward facing speaker here, so don't expect any magic, but side by side the Mini 3, the new tablet is a great improvement. With the slight bump to processing comes an unexpected drop to battery capacity. The iPad Mini 3 rated at 6350 mAh, and the new iPad Mini 4 drops to just 5124 mAh. This is an unconfirmed rating, from a device tier down. We have other reports that the battery is actually a tad larger, coming in at 7471 mAh, so do not be surprised when we come back and update this at a later date. In the end, Apple claims the same overall battery life for each tablet, advertising about 10 hours of use per charge. We plan to put the batteries to test soon, but for now, we can say that our regular usage is experiencing the claimed screen on time, getting us over 4 hours of lit screen and losing almost nothing during the night when the device is not in use. The iPad Mini 4 is a great little tablet that comes in at a price that reflects its quality and capabilities. It looks gorgeous, is a breeze to use and leaves little to be desired. Pricing is fairly predictable out of the Apple camp, starting the iPad Mini 4 at $399 and topping out at $729 for the current highest capacity model, with LTE. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and like this video.